Now today we'll be showing on how to remove a steering knuckle. Now you may be doing this because you have to replace the axle, you're doing maybe some subframe repair, there's a number of reasons why. But it's really not too hard, I'll show you the techniques that I use, but there's really a number of different ways to get this done. Now a good location to jack up the vehicle is the front cross member. On many Hondas and Acuras, they actually have an arrow pointing right to the front cross member. Very, very good solid point on the vehicle. Okay, before I like to begin, I always soak down any part that we're going to remove with some PB Blaster. You can always use WD-40. In a case like this, this vehicle is 16 years old, lives in the Northeast United States, really nasty winter weather throughout the year. And after 16 years, sometimes these bolts can be pretty nasty to remove. You don't want them to break. So just soak everything down with some penetrating oil. So let's start by removing the caliper. And that's just this bottom bolt right here. And what you can do is just Give it a quick tap with a heavy hammer, and that's it. And sometimes you'll find a bracket for the brake hose. This flips up. Okay. And then you have the caliper bracket, which is held in. Typically, there's 17 or 19 millimeter bolts, one there, another one right there. Okay, again, good solid three, four pound hammer, big help. Okay, there's one. These ratcheting wrenches, by the way, are awesome. They're from Harbor Freight. You could typically find them on sale for $20, and they give you a lot of different sizes. Big time saver. Okay, now Honda is known to use these flip type screws in the rotors, or in their rotors, I should say. A lot of manufacturers use them today. What you can use is a hand impact set because they're really, really tight. They can seize on. This makes the job so easy. Here we go. So as you can see, we're very lucky. This rotor comes off without a problem, which doesn't happen very often, especially if you live in a, uh, in a winter climate. So what you could do you have two six millimeter ends. Many rotors have these six millimeter ends. And all that you do is you go to your local auto parts store, you go to Home Depot, Lowe's, so on and so forth, and grab two screws that are, you want machined, not threaded, machined, six millimeter machined ends. And all that you do is you just slowly turn the screw here, and as you turn it, it will strike the hub and push off the rotor. If you don't have these six millimeter ends, I'll include a link for a uh, wheel bearing replacement we did years ago. And I just slowly uh, struck the circumference of the rotor with a hammer. You can also use a puller. So there's different techniques, but if you have these six millimeter ends, by far your fastest and easiest bet. So now we need to remove the axle nut from the axle. And as you can see, there's a little dimple. We just need to push back that dimple and remove the axle nut. Now there's two ways to remove these. They're very tight. In this case, it's 180 foot-pounds from the factory. Option one is you can use an impact cordless gun. That's what I'm going to use. Option two is if you don't have one of those, before you remove the rotor and the brake pads, have someone press on the brake hard and then use a breaker bar and back out this axle nut, okay? The key is use a breaker bar. Without a breaker bar, these are really, really hard to remove. Now, just in case you don't know what a breaker bar is, this is what it looks like. It's incredibly long, gives you a long handle, as you can see, 18 and a half inches. The axle nut happens to be 32 millimeters, so this is our socket. 
but this is what you're looking at. You could pick up one of these from Harbor Freight, Amazon for around eight, nine bucks. Real nice tool to have for sure. And as you can see, nice fluid. That's what you want to see. Sometimes you have to tap uh, the end with a mallet, but you just have to be able to move it just a little bit. So now I just want to start removing anything that's attached to this knuckle. So right here we have a metal brace for the brake line, or the ABS line I should say. So now I'm going to deal with the upper, that's up here, the upper ball joint and the lower ball joint. A lot of different ways you could do this. I'll show you the way I'm going to do it. Uh, let me just make sure you guys can see this. This is the lower ball joint. Okay, so let's start with the upper first. So now we need to remove the cotter pin. Take notice of how this is shaped. So you have the top at a 90 degree angle. Okay, and then the bottom is just flat, 180 degrees. Again, replace these, you don't want to reuse them. There we go. It can be a little tricky sometimes, but there we go. Okay. And then this happens to be a 17 millimeter. They're usually not very tight. They're not meant to be tight, really. Okay. Now, two options you have to remove this from the upper mount. Number one is you can use a three pound hammer. Strike it very, very hard. Eventually, it will pop out. Option two is you can use a service set. This is a lot easier, in my opinion. You can rent these. You can buy one for maybe around 50, 55 bucks. Just make sure you push up the boot. Let me give you a closer view here. Okay, so you push up the boot around the adapter. And then slowly turn this. And there you go. Now this is... That was quite easy. Let's do the lower ball joint. Typically it's a, lot, a little bit harder than that, but that's all. It makes it really, really easy using a service set. So now we need to remove the steering tie rod. Again, cotter pin. Okay. So I just hit my first roadblock. As you can see, the cotter pin completely snapped off on the front, also on the back. So we'll need to drill this out. And then on the bottom here, this is a 17 millimeter. And as before, you can hit right here with the heavy hammer. You don't hit the tie rod itself. You want to hit the housing. Or you can use one of these service tools. Just make sure you're careful with the boot. And just check on the other end. And you can also use a tool like this for a tie rod end. It's all in the same kit. Okay, here we go. Oops. There you go. So we have the upper ball joint, the tie rod end, and then we just have the lower ball joint. And we are home, where is it? There it is, and then we're home free. And for this, I'm just using a breaker bar just to break it loose. There we go. And one last time using the service tool again. Now I have the upper ball joint, 
the lower ball joint to move. Push back the axle here. And there you go. Okay. And that's what it takes to remove a steering knuckle from a vehicle. Now I'm doing this in my case because an ABS sensor was broken, as you can see. Completely broken, snapped off. So I need to drill this out. And I was a little worried doing this on the vehicle because if I did not drill it correctly, it may strike the axle. So I'm just going to drill out what's left over, put everything back together, and that's it. Any questions, comments, please leave it below. And I'm just going to wrap this up.